Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. With Star Wars always seeming to be in the headlines, hot after the critically acclaimed The Mandalorian, I've been asked if Disney should make a brand new series of Star Wars films from scratch or to branch off existing brands from the originals. For me, I would start brand new for films but bring back an existing storyline being the Knights of the Old Republic. Looking back, I've never been a really huge fan of Star Wars, but enjoyed the films for the action and the fantasy the lore brought, but always seemed to stick with Star Trek frenzies with the next generation growing up. I never even purchased one Star Wars game until One Faithful Day in 2003, where LucasArts entrusted the brand to RPG developer BioWare. Knights of the Old Republic was developed by BioWare and released by LucasArts in 2003 for the original Xbox and Microsoft Windows. Boy, was I surprised. Understanding very little on the lore and history, this game was the best to get you started to even understand the totality of the universe, having you start literally 4,000 years before the Galactic Empire. What a great way to tell a story about how it all began and the differences between good and evil and those in between. The choices available gave the player the options to choose the light or dark side, but was so heavily in character development, you were truly engaged on the choices made in comparison to any other RPG game I have played up until then. Selling off the story shelves, a sequel was developed by Obsidian Entertainment and released by LucasArts in 2004 for the Xbox and Windows. This time around, with a different developer, the game was to expand the mythology of the Sith, coming back into the light after almost being entirely exterminated by the Jedi. With the hallmarks of the original, the game still contained a well-written story, heavy character development, and the action and choice you would expect from the original's formula Bioware has mastered. A game and series ending on a high with such great response from the fans and gamers alike. So bears the question, with that much success, how about a number three? Obsidian never really wanted to end the series, coming up with many different storylines for a third chapter, but was never officially approved by LucasArts due to other major projects at the time. Bioware at that time was doing their best at in-house brands and IPs, with Jade Empire taking the lead in 2005. Right after, Bioware then was hard at work with their newest IP, leading to of course their own Space Odyssey and one of my favorite brands of all time, Mass Effect, for the Xbox 360 in 2007. With their success, Electronic Arts would purchase Bioware in 2007. In adding their skills into the market, EA was lacking. Still, not truly available but expanding, Bioware Austin was created in hopes of a brand new Star Wars game with Star Wars The Old Republic. EA now wanted to jump into the online space like those of EverQuest and Warcraft at the time. Released in 2011, the hopes for a true single-player sequel was squashed, but did have ties to the series in later updates, especially with the story of Revan. Closer to the emergence of the Galactic Empire, we would receive a different look and feel to the classic Knights of before, but still no true sequel. Although the $200 million investment for the budgeted online game for Star Wars The Old Republic is still a thriving community with its switch to free play and is just about one billion in sales in today's market. With Disney giving EA exclusive rights for the Star Wars franchise from 2013 to 2023, there was little demand for the company to return to with a third sequel as Disney announced that the Bioware and Obsidian games are no longer canon in 2015 and that was later doubled down with EA's focus to dominate their single-player focus to online titles for higher revenue. Although we did receive the fantastic single-player game from EA with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, there is little hope that Bioware will return at the helm of a Star Wars game 
with all their efforts in Dragon Age 3 and numerous other projects to come. But do we want another sequel from Bioware in the state that they are in since the acquisition from EA? That question and more pushes the game further back to Ubisoft on saving this fantastic RPG. Even Kathleen Kennedy was looking into developing stories from Knights of the Old Republic era, but no plans have ever been made to make anything of it. In the end, Knights of the Old Republic 3 has been a casualty that fans want that developers just don't have time for anymore. Getting the right developer and doing it the right way takes time and money. It looks to be that storyline is getting older and older and losing its light of possibility as I feel will never be reproduced. Ubisoft, you are our only hope. That's it for me on this look at a cancelled game that never came to be. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 3. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and gray. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Thank <laughs> you.